Hello everybody, it's Mary Lynn from Heart at Work and welcome to tonight. We're doing an evening call and I have a, on the call with me tonight is Diane and I'm looking forward to hearing more what she does. And so we'll be, be talking with Diane tonight, Diane Compton. So anyway, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, hi Diane, welcome to the call. Thank you so much too to have this call. It's good to yeah. share with your tribe. Yeah. And after I heard when I, Diane and I first kind of did a get to know you chat, I was just like, wow, this woman, she knows a lot. So <laughs> I, I'm going to learn a lot tonight, I'm sure. Well, I so, hope to share something <laughs> valuable. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about how did you get started doing what you're doing and how long you've been doing it for? Well, I've been doing it for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was in a management position. And it, but there was an economic downturn, and I was asked to downsize my staff mm -hmm. in a way that, in my view, violated what I call my center core true north. Mm -hmm. I had built a lot of trust with my team, and I was just basically told just to, you know, cut them, and that was it. Yeah. And I had been thinking, Marilyn, about... Uh, getting my master's at Gonzaga anyway and mm -hmm. taking somewhat of a sabbatical from work. Right. And uh, so I thought, you know, once I got my staff, if I were to do it the way they wanted me to do it, right. Um, I would be the next to go. So why not go first? <laughs> <laughs> why not just uh, let them do the, the, the dishonorable, dishonorable thing? Okay people in the workplace. And so anyway, I enrolled in my master's program mm -hmm. at uh, Gonzaga University. And when I went into that program in organizational leadership, mm -hmm. I wanted, I actually came in with a question. I wanted to know what builds an ethical, quality focused, productive, happy, and cooperative group of people at work. Right. And so uh, it was wonderful. I mean, Gonzaga let me pretty much build my own program. So what I did is I studied all the group dynamic research I could find in mm -hmm. education, psychology, and business. Okay. And out of that meta-analysis of research, there were six principles emerged. And those six principles are trust, interdependence, genuineness, Mm -hmm. empathy, mm -hmm. risk resolution, and success. So then the next question was, well, is this true? <laughs> Can you actually take the behavior in a group and find out what the quality level is of each of those six principles, or is it just a feel-good idea? Right. You know, can this be proven? Can it be measured? So I designed a survey out of that research and uh, went through all of the qualification criteria for substantiating that assessment. Mm -hmm. And it came out uh, after the first run, it came out that, oh my goodness, you could isolate these principles in group behavior. Mm -hmm. And then the question was, when it went in for psych review, the question was, well, can it be repeated? So two, four years later, and after two independent studies with big organizations, right. the results were conclusive. Mm -hmm. Not only could I measure that behavior and the quality of those behaviors in group dynamics, they could also prescribe and subscribe to the type of training that would transform, let's say, an adequate group Mm -hmm. into truly exceptional one right and at that time soft skill training like giving and receiving feedback or coaching skills or mm -hmm. any of the types of training and development that we would be considering soft skills uh, people were discounting them in the workplace because quote they couldn't measure them but right. I could mm -hmm. and so after that process uh, I basically hung out my shingle and I've been doing this work for 25 plus years. Right. So you now take your 
thesis or your information and go into workplaces and help them turn it around? Well, yes, help them turn it around. I cut my teeth basically in mergers because mm -hmm. those were the types of organizations, merging organizations that had a social outcome. Right. Uh, let's say uh, like an air ambulance service merger or hospital mergers. I cut my teeth in those types of mergers because um, those were communities that were coming together and they had two different cultures and they had to create something that was better. Right. And uh, so that's one client. But recently I have taken all of my systems that I've created over the years mm -hmm. and now I am licensing other coaches and consultants to be able to use them. Right. So I'm taking the approach, you know, there's a, there's the approach of, you know, you hold everything close to your heart, heart. it's your secret sauce and you don't share it with anybody. Well, I'm taking a different approach because my mission is to improve the world of work for millions of people. Right. One team at a time. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just one person. Right. But by letting this go, by sharing what I have created with others, mm -hmm. um, other people are experiencing the, the success I have experienced. Right. And there are more people that will find that happiness in the heart th that you speak to right. uh, through your, pod that your podcast at work. Right. I mean, it's important to me that the human experience at work is a positive one. Right, yeah, because nobody wants to work in a negative, uh, cruel workplace. I mean, I think we've all had- And there's many of them. Yeah. yeah, and I'm sure we've all had our own experiences, our own stories that we could share with people, and somebody will say, well, why are you still there? And I will, well, because I love working with the people that I work with, right? Right. But it right. may be not the, you know, when I was going, working a lot in corporate stuff and doing that stuff before I started my own thing. I always lots of found lots of managers would get promoted, but they never got trained. <laughs> exactly. You know, so you would come and they won't, they wouldn't bring anybody in to talk about it because you know, that would look bad upon them. And I'm like, well, actually not. So, you know, but like you were saying, well, that's it. Yeah. And, and that leadership gap is, is a horrible one. Because mm -hmm. if you look at the statistics of, uh, and I've been uh, reviewing a number of studies lately about people in that position that being uh, elevated to a management or supervisory position because right. they could get the job done. Right. But they hadn't had any demonstrated ability or training on how to lead people. Right. <laughs> 85% of them are miserable and mm -hmm. a good percentage of that 85% quit. Right. They don't want to be managers. They, right. It's like they are set up to fail. And, mm -hmm. uh, and actually I took that situation, which I, which is a leadership gap mm -hmm. and people not being trained and actually made that uh, sort of a story within a story in this new book that we're launching in June. Oh, okay. And, uh, and it is about a fellow who is in his mid thirties and he, he gets a uh, interview with his boss at a four o'clock on a Friday afternoon mm -hmm. who says, you know, we did an exit interview with one of your employees and boy, you've had a lot of high turnover <laughs> in your group. And that employee said, you're a ter terrible boss. And that is why he quit. Right. So our little protagonist, Derek Alexander, has to figure out over the weekend how he's going to turn himself around. Mm -hmm. And that sink or, say, uh, sink or swim approach of just throwing your managers off the boat and right. <laughs> they don't know how to swim, um, it just creates so much unhappiness mm -hmm. because they don't know how to deal with the people that, that need either correction or guidance. Right. And uh, that's a miserable experience for everyone. Mm -hmm. And then they will normally default to how they were raised as kids, <laughs> you know, because yeah. what else are they going to pull on? They've yeah. got to pull on their experience, right? Right. Or 
somebody else that they worked under, let's say in another organization. Um, they'll emulate other behaviors and really have nothing from their core mm -hmm. that is sincere and authentic and capable of guiding people into higher levels of performance. Right. And how does that guy even ask his boss, well, how can you help me then? Right. Because the boss will probably just say, well, you figure it out. Right. What do you mean I figure it out? <laughs> Obviously, I don't have it right. So how exactly. can Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it is, a, it, it is an issue. And I think we're seeing more. And, and I'm so glad to see that we are seeing more and more people talk about the human at work. Right. Put the human what back in human resources, whatever that exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Put the human back in human resources, yes. <laughs> and put the human back in leadership. Right, right. So yeah. what do you suppose that they should be doing to getting more humanness in their leadership? What do you recommend? Well, I think that learning how to really coach for performance, like a coach, not, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I think of Mark Few. Mark mm -hmm. Few is the basketball coach at Gonzaga University. Mm -hmm. And that man is amazing. What he is able to groom out of his team to now be in March Madness mm -hmm. as a little tiny school right. <laughs> going up against the Giants. And, uh, and I think that, that really learning how to coach mm -hmm. is key. And I think there's also systems that need to be put into place that aren't thought of mm -hmm. when it comes to human performance. We, we're seeing now uh, millennials, we're still seeing millennials and we're now seeing Gen Z, yeah. um, you know, quit after just a few months of work mm -hmm. because they're not being trained. Mm -hmm. And so I think that there are tools that can train everybody on the, the work culture as well as how to do their job well, mm -hmm. but also those skills that, that build trust, that build interdependence, mm -hmm. that build genuineness, empathy, risk, and success. People need those trainings, right. and they don't have to leave the workplace to get them anymore. Right, right. Yeah, because you could sign up in a course online and get some, some right. of that. Or right. you can just hire somebody like yourself to come in and teach everybody how to do that. There's so many great facilitators out there. Oh, there's actually, wonderful. Yes. You know, people that can come in and help you work with your people one-on-one -on -one or as a group, right? Exactly. And, and so we're looking at how can, since the workforce is now is becoming more and more virtual and right. more and more virtual teams, we, uh, about three, four years ago, we began looking at um, taking the assessment, which will surface what is the lowest uh, quality of, of principle within mm -hmm. their organizational behavior. Let's say they score really poorly on genuineness. Right. Um, so what we have done is we've built 48 weeks of microtraining. Mm -hmm that speak to genuineness and help employees uh, with uh, self-awareness skills, uh, feedback skills, a number of the soft skills that help them become more genuine, which would be being respectfully sincere, frank, and forthright right. in the workplace. Right. Which, and, and as a result, what we find is if you want to transform work culture, Mm -hmm. The best way to do it is through behavior. Right. And, and, and you can change behavior one week at a time just by taking 10 minutes of training, practicing that training. So it actually, um, there's a retention factor at work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, learning, learning just a simple skill to practice at work so right. that that work and training and learning is all integrated into 
an outcome that serves everyone. It's a win for the employee. It's a win for the manager. It's a win for the company. Mm -hmm. And as a result, uh, what we're finding, we have like a 95% satisfaction rate mm -hmm. with this training. And what we're finding is that if you're a small company, it doesn't have to cost you a fortune. Right. And the bigger you are and the more employees you have, the less the annual unit cost is per employee. Right. So it doesn't have to break the bank in order to train employees and give them a sense of, of real commitment. And then at that point, too, we, you can work virtually again with managers or teams of managers or managers one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. uh, which is why we love licensing coaches. Right that work with managers and work with their performance, their leadership performance, mm -hmm. as well as our uh, consultants who are doing more of the team learning aspect, right. you know, the team development, leadership team development piece. Right, right. And uh, what we're seeing is that there is just so much more kindness mm -hmm. Uh, expressed at work because the skill level that people have, let's say, in confronting one another <laughs> um, is not a defensive, aggressive confrontation, but something is that is more assertive, clear, truthful, and not packed with um, the type of behavior that that hurts people. Right, right. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think there was a study, there was several books written about it anyway, but about kindness and um, in the workplace and with people in general. And is that a lot of people will love to share the story of how they were treated with kindness, but if you turn around and ask them, okay, what did you do to help somebody else to be treated with kindness? Right. They almost couldn't tell you anything. Well, and it's really curious because, yeah. and I never even, you know, I didn't think about this until I started seeing in, um, uh, uh, when people run the Tigers Workforce Behavioral Profile, right. if genuineness, empathy, and risk are low, yeah, it's kind of like <laughs> grr, right? <laughs> sort of a growl in there. Yeah. And, uh, and so when we start training, and especially the empathy piece in that, uh, what we find is that when empathy increases, mm -hmm. the random acts of kindness increase. Right. And they're the, 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 there's something that could be as simple as somebody seeing paper on a floor and picking it up and throwing it in the garbage can instead of just going by. And it's not because, oh, it looks so sloppy. It's because somebody could slip on this. Right. And that transformation and how we think about the people that we're working with mm -hmm. um, is, is a huge advantage to a, a company. You'll find people just flipping the light switch off when they leave a room. Right. Because they want to save energy. Right. Because they care about the company and they care about the organization's bottom line. Mm -hmm. But what I find is that kindness is kind of, it, it's, it's an expression of happy people. Mm hmm. Yeah, I always said you can't be happy unless you're kind. <laughs> right. And then yeah, it's hard to be happy. kind when you're yeah, when you're around. miserable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So th they're glued together in mm -hmm. a very important way that when you really focus on what it takes to be empathetic, boy, there is nothing fluffy and etheric about empathy. Those are tough skills. Right. Very tough skills to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and what we also find is that when people talk about happiness in the workplace, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of a vague expression um, of kind of umbrella terms right. for many different positive emotions mm -hmm. and responses in an organization. But the empirical research about happiness is not vague. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, uh, and there's financial reasons for it. If, if a person can't think of it from a, uh, the human capacity, they can only think of it from the financial capacity. Um, happiness has a financial benefit. Right. You know, you, what you will find is that people are more creative. Mm -hmm. You will find that people are more uh, uh, 
the kind. Mm -hmm. They'll flip off. They'll pick up that paper because they don't want somebody to slip. Right. They will turn off the light to save the company money. Yeah. Um, but happy people also adapt to change easier. Mm -hmm. uh, they solve problems faster. Mm -hmm. They're generally promoted faster. Mm -hmm. And they receive a lot more help and feedback from people because people like them. Right. <laughs> they like to be around them. Yeah. And they also earn more money over the course of their careers. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And, and that's all supported by empirical research. Right. So right. Uh, I think developing the type of, uh, of workforce that is cooperative and kind and it provides happiness and it is ethical and it is quality focused. Mm -hmm. I mean, those, those qualities that, that are embraced within that organizational behavior dynamic, it's all measurable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's and and it's measurable in a bottom line. So, right. if an organization, let's say they have a lot of bullying, they're known as toxic, um, and uh, they have high turnover, people don't mm -hmm. want to stick around for any length of time. Right. It's all measurable in their bottom line. Right. As either cost savings or productivity improvements. Right. Right. So yeah. there's a financial reason behind why. Uh, the C-suite would want to create the type of work culture mm -hmm. that uh, has these measurable six principles within them. Right, right. Awesome. So what type of clients do you like to work with the best? I know you mentioned oh. about it and want to expand it and get any more coaches and consultants, but what about your clients? What are your best sweet spot? My sweet spot is when people get it and they come together and I have a story. I mean, it, it, uh, this was, uh, this was a merger mm -hmm. and it was between two, uh, air ambulance services that were under one umbrella company and the cost of running two air ambulance services in a community of about 2 million people was just too high. Mm -hmm. So what usually happens, the people who control things mm -hmm. crunched through the numbers and said, we're going to do this. And they threw these two companies together. Mm -hmm. And then they also lied in the process. <laughs> they said, we're not going to, we're going to keep everyone. Right. Well, as soon as the merger happened, they started letting people go. Mm -hmm. And when you have an air ambulance service, it is a, it's a triage unit unit. Mm -hmm. of people who have learned to work together, who trust one another, mm -hmm. who, uh, you know, who are just, they've got their roles and their protocols down. And when they go on to an emergency, everybody know they work, they just click. Right. For the benefit of the patient. Right. Well, when you strip that web of cooperation, trust out of a, a team like that, What's going to happen? Service quality is going to plummet, mm -hmm. which started happening. Plus, um, we're talking about triage level nurses, MDs, anesthesiologists, people mm -hmm. who sincerely do not want to make a mistake in their work. Right. Of all the types of work types, <laughs> they tend to be more perfectionistic. Mm -hmm then uh you know somebody who well, i don't know i mean who is uh s serving tables in a restaurant mm -hmm. right i mean they do not want conflict they do not want to have service um uh, quality fail mm -hmm. and so they were in trauma themselves and they had brought in two other consultants who failed mm -hmm. And then finally they called my company and I came in, we took them through the survey, found out where the true pain points were for the group. Right. And then, you know, the, Einstein was brilliant on so many levels, but one of the things he said is you cannot solve the problem at the same level yeah. it was created. Right. So we had to create, I said, okay, 
Um, these were people who competed against uh, one another. They had all the justifications for mm -hmm. why um, their former company was better than the other company. Mm -hmm. So they didn't trust one another. Right. So we said, you know, it's not going to come together that way. Humpty Dumpty yeah. is, the, we can't patch it. We need to create <laughs> something much higher. Right. So if you could have what you want, what would that be? Mm -hmm. And we took them from, uh, you know, developing their group behavior norms of how they wanted to be in relationship to one another, all the way up to uh, replanning their operations and it came together beautifully. Mm -hmm. And what, what my sweet spot was in that was people who were in serious trauma from the, the way that that merger was handled right. to now, it's interesting. They were, they were in a whole different state mm -hmm. and now they service yeah. areas in my state. And that was one of their goals was to expand into from Washington state into Oregon and Northern California. And they have accomplished all of it. Wow. And they came together, they came together and they worked so well together. Mm -hmm. And initially we were looking at about a three year um, merger correction mm -hmm. process. And this team gelled in 18 months. Wow. Oh, awesome. it was wonderful. So the sweet spot for me is uh, is our leaders who are going to support everyone mm -hmm. through the stages of reconstruction, right? And not bail when they first, you know, when a problem incurs, right? And then to see what happens in the lives of people when that happens, when they actually do have the outcome mm -hmm. of of not only the, the organization coming together but people saying oh man this was much better than what we had before right right awesome that's well it cool. is and and, <laughs> and that's what gives me joy that's yeah. why i get up in the morning right right awesome so, great yeah. so we're just winding down so would you have any final uh notes to say or message to say you want to say to everybody before we close off well, I'm so glad that you're watching this. It, <laughs> it, you know, I, I am. I, I'm really glad that you have an interest in kindness and happiness in the workplace and mm -hmm. hard at work. Mm -hmm. So that's important to me. And mm -hmm. uh, if you want to download our white paper on happiness, please do. Okay. It's complimentary. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would love your feedback, too. So okay. feel free to email me. Okay, I will. At Tigers at Ben Broadband.com. That's uh -huh. Ben Broadband.com. I love talking to um, uh, to people about what how to create more heart at work. Yeah. So it's all about it's just um, as somebody pointed out to me, it's it's just the heart at work and the kindness and it's it all has to, you all have to feel like you want to do that. Otherwise it's right. nothing going to happen. Right. Right. And, and also if you're, you're curious in the little story about how Derek corrected himself yeah. over the weekend, um, we have uh, an actual, we have like a pre-sale on the book right now okay. at the, at the book volume rate, mm -hmm. uh, which is half of what it would cost you for just an individual. Mm -hmm. um, book on Amazon. So, you know, feel free to go to becomingtigers.com, flip through the pages, see if yeah. this is something that would be a good story for you yeah. and at your workplace because Derek gets it. Yeah. And yeah. Derek will make those changes. <laughs> well, I look forward to reading that story and I'm sure many other people will be willing to read that yeah. story as well. Well, and especially <laughs> if it changes somebody's life. Yeah, if it, and it changes their the, the, how they're leading at work. Yeah, so that as they're happier and their employees are happier, that would make me happy too. Of course, of course, and of course they'll be able to reach out to you on your page where the yes this call will sit, so they can reach out to you from there. And, good, um, good. We'll get you out there and message to the world about what you're good. doing and how you can help workplaces. Get better. Right. Well, Happier. and also help uh, consultants and coaches with yeah. uh, a, a system right. approach uh, right. that 
that's cooperative and collaborative with so many good resources they already used. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Okay, well, thanks very much, Diane. I'm going to close bet. off, and uh, we'll be hearing uh, more about Diane on uh, <laughs> podcast.hardatworkonline.org. And um, but you know, of course, we'll we'll hear more about her later. I'm sure we'll even do a follow up session from her. Please, well. I would love it. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs>